thank you everybody for coming to our second Limitless speaking event today. I'm Sherry Roeder, one of the founders of Limitless, and I have Katie Ferguson here and Eva Kantrowitz, two of the other founders. And we're thrilled to see everybody to come here. Heather Monahan, author of Confidence Creator. Welcome, Heather. So before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items. I know a number of people won Heather's book, which is great, and she's gonna sign those for you guys after her speech. Um, secondly, we, are, we wanna get some immediate feedback from as many of you as possible. So after Heather talks, if you can meet kind of up here behind the stage, and we will tell you what we would like, like you to do. It won't take very long, so hopefully a number of you will volunteer, because if not, I'm really great at volunteering people. <laughs> okay. Thirdly, let's talk Heather very quickly. Um, it's just, it is so amazing to have her here today. Things have so taken off for her. And we really all owe Lauren Russo. Hello, Lauren Russo. <laughs> who heads up our audio division here. A huge vote of thanks, because uh, Lauren is the one who said to me, Sherry, you really ought to have Heather come talk. She's doing all these amazing things, and I think she'll be great. So, Lauren and Heather go way back, so I'm going to let Lauren introduce Heather, and we will be off and running. And then we're going to have some moderated Q&A. I have questions you guys submitted. Thank you. And we're also going to solicit questions from the crowd. So, over to Lauren. Thank you, Sherry. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to support Limitless. Um, I feel this will be a very meaningful and, empowerless and empowering Limitless session. Heather and I had the opportunity to work together in her sales role at Beasley, where she was the chief revenue officer, where she managed over $200 million in revenue and managed a team of 400. I immediately felt her passion for radio, and her business approach was very solution-oriented, innovative, and collaborative. Over time, she became a trusted mentor and friend who was always a champion for women's empowerment in the workplace. While working at Beasley, Heather was simultaneously building a brand now named Boss and Heel. Heather is a true entrepreneur based in Miami and launched, launched her personal brand in 2007 to empower women after being unexpectedly terminated from Beasley Broadcasting. Faced with the choice to go back to her comfort zone or take a leap of faith and pursue her passion to elevate others, Heather chose to make that leap. She's since been featured on the Elvis Duran Morning Show, wrote and self-published her first entitled book, Confidence Creator, and was named the brand ambassador for Perry Ellis. She was also named a limit-breaking female founder by Thrive Global. She is a member of the Florida International University Advisory Board to further serve as a mentor and, and leader in the South Florida community. Confidence Creator was released on Amazon on May 22nd and immediately took the number one release position in business motivation and self-empowerment, women's personal growth, self-esteem, and personal transformation. Before the end of this week, Confidence Creator claimed Amazon's number one bestseller in biographies of business professionals, women's personal spiritual growth, and personal transformation. Heather has been featured in USA Today, Bloomberg, the Jenny McCarthy and Maria Menudo shows on Sirius XM, and various other media outlets for her work to elevate others. Please join me in giving a warm horizon welcome to Heather Monahan. Well, thank you for being here. This is so surreal for me. Can everyone hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's surreal for me to be here today. As Lauren mentioned, for years, I came here to this office to call on Lauren and ensure that radio was doing the job for all of you. For years, I 20 something years, I was in radio and I got to a place where I was pretty comfortable and feeling pretty good about myself having reached the C-suite, a place so many women don't reach. And today, standing here as an author, and the craziest part about it all is that if you Google me right now, I show up as an author. 
not as a business executive, a leader, a radio person, which is kind of the lane I had always put myself in because that's where I always worked, but now that's all gone. And today I stand here an author. I started writing that book July 27th of 2017, which is one year ago on Friday. So I want every single person in this room to know something. I have not been confident my whole life, although I stand here today feeling very confident right now. And I want you to know no matter where you are in your career and your personal life, you can make major changes in a very short period of time. And you can go from being a radio person to being an author literally overnight. Within one year, so much has changed for me. And I, I want, if nothing else from this talk today, I want everybody to feel hopeful that wherever you are, you are in charge of it and you can create some very positive change if you choose to. So I appreciate everyone welcoming me today as an author and not a radio person, which I still can't get my head around. So very grateful to be here. And Sherry wanted me to accomplish one thing that she's brought up many times when I've spoken to her, and I don't want to forget about it. So I'm going to lead today and speak about the fraud mindset first. So the fraud mindset is something a lot of people know about, but I would assume some people don't know about. Can I see a show of hands? Who knows about the fraud mindset? Oh, interesting, not many. OK, that's a good thing. Or maybe this is going to be eye-opening. Many times in different people's career, including my own, we wake up going into a situation thinking, holy cow, I'm gonna be found out. I'm gonna be found out that I don't have all the answers. I'm not really qualified to go on this pitch. I can't go into this position because I don't really know what to do. People are handing me all of this money and I'm supposed to be converting it into results for them. Who am I? Has anyone ever had a moment like that? Right, so I, I mean, I think we all have if we, if we want to get real with ourselves. If you haven't, you are not pushing yourself far enough in life, people. <laughs> so I've had these moments all through my career just like all of you, and I just keep pushing myself. Well, most recently, and this is crazy surreal, I got a DM two weeks ago from a professional basketball player. And he said, I read your book, and your book is fantastic. And I want you to know in the NBA, the difference between being a good player and a great one is confidence. Is there any chance I could meet with you and you could help me? This is a fraud mindset moment. Someone who makes millions and millions of dollars a year and is six foot 11 is messaging me, asking me to improve his NBA basketball game via confidence training. Hello? So of course I responded like I was, well sure, we will set up a time to talk and your people can call my people. Mind you, I don't have any people. <laughs> So his agent called me the next day and said, can we meet with you this week, Heather? And I said, no, I'm going to New York City and I'm a co-author and a second book and it's being launched at the Guggenheim and I'm feeling very important. And this is true too, that is a great story. But anyways, so I said, no, I'm going to New York. I'm not available next week, we can set something. No, we'll fly to New York, Heather, no problem. Holy cow, I am hitting panic mode. What am I gonna do with an NBA player that thinks I can create confidence for him? Fraud, fraud is all that's happening in my mind. Remember, I was a radio person, and now you Google me and I'm an author, and now I'm gonna coach people in the NBA? I can't handle this, this, this I'm gonna be found out. So I went to New York and I kept saying, I can only meet for a very finite window, I have to be at the Guggenheim, it's very important, which I wasn't lying, it was true, but I was really scared to take this meeting because what if this man flew all the way here to meet with me and I couldn't help him fix his game? I was afraid I was a fraud. And so many times in my career I've had moments like this and I looked back on my career and reminded myself, okay, I felt like a fraud in this moment, what happened? I didn't die, I moved forward, and things turned out okay. All right, I'm gonna gain strength from that. And I looked at a number of different occasions in my life where I felt that way, and I remember I moved through it and I lived. And I thought, 
okay, I'm gonna go down to that bar lobby right now and I'm gonna meet with this NBA player and I'm gonna walk in there in my sweats because I gotta stay comfortable and how I dress really affects my confidence in moments where I'm questioning myself. And that's a good tidbit for all of you to remember from the color that you wear to how it fits you, that's part of my confidence game and I was going confidence game strong on this day. So I walked into that lobby bar petrified. Oh, P.S., I had a Chardonnay before I went down. <laughs> Another confidence game changer. I did not have any Chardonnay today, unfortunately. So I go walking into this lobby bar and I see a giant sitting in the corner and with another giant and I approach the table and he stands up holding my book. And in that moment, that fraud mindset went away in my mind and I felt like I was looking at my son. It was a 24 year old kid who was standing there holding onto something that he wanted to gain strength from. The same way I was gaining strength from my outfit, I was gaining strength from those other instances I had in my life, he's much younger. He was gaining strength from my book. And in that moment, I felt no longer like a fraud. But had I not shown up to that meeting, I would have been chipping away at my confidence and I would have really been a fraud. So, so much about confidence and building and creating your confidence is about showing up not about the outcome. I don't know that I fixed this man's game for the season this year. We will see. But I can tell you this, I sat across from him as if I was sitting with my child. And I know I shared some good wisdom with him when he said three hours into the conversation that he begins to panic at the foul line. And when he's in practice, he hits every single shot. But the stats don't match that in the game. And I said, well, why do you get so nervous? And he said, because everyone in the world is watching me. You don't understand that because you're not a professional athlete. And I said, I might not be a professional athlete, but I'm a professional speaker. And I can tell you this, I used to feel that same way when you stand up to speak and everyone's looking at you. And what if you say the wrong thing? But you know what I realized through time and experience? No one's really listening. People are on Instagram and they are making plans with their kids and figuring out where their sitter is and yelling at their husbands all on their phone while you think the world is looking at you. I said, and if you think that's any different, don't because I've been to your games and I'm not watching. <laughs> and he laughed and he said, really? And I said, really? So, you know, no matter who you are and no matter what situation you're in, showing up and being your real you will always allow you to exude confidence and be your best, ver best version of yourself. So hopefully that accomplishes the fraud mindset that Sherry wanted me to take care of. Okay, so now back to me. So I'm Heather Monahan. I'm the author of Confidence Creator, formerly a radio person that lived in one lane that I allowed myself to be put in. I didn't understand you can smash through lanes and take your skills and talents wherever you want to go because I was afraid. That fear for me started at a very young age. I grew up very poor. And I know that some people find that hard to believe because we like to see someone, we see this person, and we project our thoughts and feelings onto the life that they had that we didn't. Well, let me tell you this. I hope you didn't have a childhood like me. I grew up in a trailer. I had a very dark, dark childhood. My poor mother struggled as a single mom with four children using food stamps to make ends meet. And me, I couldn't even share this story until two years ago. It would bring me to tears. I was ashamed and I felt embarrassed and I didn't want people to know what it was like, how I felt growing up. But what I learned through my life experience and through focusing on building confidence for me because I knew to be my best, I had to get confident. And for everyone, confidence is that game changer. Shining a light on that shame for me and owning that changed everything for me and it wasn't easy to do. Shining a light on shame is never easy to do. Like when I got arrested when I was in the radio business. I mean, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands, but I know some people in here have been arrested. <laughs> it's also not easy to share that story. Well, I decided when writing this book, I was gonna be a fraud if I didn't share that story. If I didn't shine a light on my shame that I was mortified I was arrested, 
It was so embarrassing. But I used to hide from it. I'd be going to high-level meetings in DC, and CEOs of other companies were showing up for these meetings I was attending. And I would find myself on the plane Googling myself, hoping my mugshot wouldn't show up. Not a very confidence-building moment, right? When you rip that Band-Aid off, throw it in the book, and then just shine the light, it's pretty easy to move forward. So when you're not feeling ashamed of who you are, when you're standing in who you are and owning it, because let me tell you, everyone has flaws. Everyone has things they don't feel great about. And the people that you look at, that you say, well, that person doesn't, that person's just naturally confident and perfect, they are the ones to really worry about because they are so full of shit. <laughs> fact, hashtag fact. So anyway, so I grew up poor, and the one lever I figured out to pull for me back at a very young age was to outwork everyone, because I didn't want to be poor. I wanted to find a way to create wealth for myself. So I became the number one seller at the Gala Winery right out of school. Then I got sexually harassed. I didn't have confidence back then, so I didn't stand up for myself. I quit and went to another job. I found a radio owner at a dinner, and we chatted, and he thought I was great. And I said, well, you can't afford me. And he said, really, what's the price? And I said, $80,000. I was 22 years old. Little did I know, this man is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and I way undersold myself. So do your research, people. That's another confidence-building moment. So I went to work for him for $80,000. Within one year, I was the number one seller. Within one year from there, my boyfriend who I lived with cheated on me. And I went to work depressed. And he said, you know what? Why don't you become my equity partner? Get on a plane with me. I'm going to drop you off somewhere. I can't tell you where it is. But if you do this, I'm going to make you more money than you can imagine. So guess what I did? I jumped on that plane, right? I wanted money, and I was heartbroken. This horrible situation had occurred, which ended up being the biggest professional blessing of my life, just like any other negative situation ends up paying off for you, because it creates a pivot moment. And this was a big one. I got dropped off in Saginaw, Michigan. They would call me LA out there, because I had a full set of teeth. <laughs> These were not my best days, but I will say I learned so much. I learned that pretending I was so tough and so confident didn't pay off because people didn't want to help me. I needed to start asking for help. I needed to start tapping my mentor and asking him to help me. Those were things I had never done because I thought weak people ask for help. I only believed that because I was weak in those moments. What I've learned since then is asking others for help is amazing. People will come and help you. And then in turn, you can help them. And when you do so, you build your confidence because you see your value and what you can bring to people, which is phenomenal. And I've seen this so many times over the past few years. So I, I became very successful at work and financially and went through life and things were getting better. And then I went to a publicly traded company and then I ascended from VP of sales to executive vice president to chief revenue officer. And then I got fired. And I was shocked and I hit a low moment. My confidence dipped to a level I didn't even know could exist. I got under a weighted blanket. I grabbed a bottle of Chardonnay, not a glass. And I cried my eyes out July 27th last year. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I was under a non-compete. I couldn't go back to the industry that I knew. I had to do something different, at least for a finite period of time. I was panicked about money, because remember, that's the one thing that always drove me. I don't want to struggle for money. So what am I going to do now? And in that moment, my fiance said to me, what do you really want to do? And I had to stop and think. And I asked each one of you to ask yourself this question right now. What is it that you really want to do? I was so stuck in that day-to-day -day grind, calling on Lauren and making sure she was OK, <laughs> that I didn't really stop to think, what do I want to do? And that afforded me a phenomenal opportunity that has completely changed my direction, my passion, and my life. And asking yourself that question at different times is so important. By putting yourself first and figuring out what it is you really want to do can start you
down a very meaningful path that for me has meant everything. So the first thing I did after getting fired and getting out from that weighted blanket was I decided to ask for help. Remember, strong people, they ask for help, right? So I put it out on social media that I had been fired. And everyone told me I was crazy because people will put their limitations onto you, their fears onto you. But I had already put it out, so guys, it's out there. Now we just wait and see what happens and keep the weighted blanket close. And what happened was people started showing up to help me and people allowed me to know I wasn't alone and they gave me uplifting stories of being fired and how it created that pivot moment for them to change their life for, for the better. And then I started Googling who's been fired and I started seeing Oprah and so many people have been fired that are the most successful people in the world and I started changing how I saw it. In good company is the way I see getting fired. I slowly built a plan, a 30-day plan, which was very manageable. And I did the same with my son when he broke his leg. By crossing the days off and celebrating the small victories and taking a step back from the expectations we put on ourselves, I was able to get through those 30 days. And by firing that negative person that thought she fired me, I allowed positive people to start showing up. One of the biggest things you can do to boost your confidence is to fire the villains in your life. And I know that that can sound so hard and so big, but it's really not. Many times it's just having a simple conversation. This relationship doesn't leave me feeling positive, so I'm leaving this relationship. Whatever that relationship may be. And you can say, well, you can say that, but it, this, this villain is my coworker. Then create boundaries to protect yourself because getting rid of the villains in your life will change everything for you and allow those positive people to step in. And if you don't have those positive people in your life today, it's because you're surrounded with villains. And I know this for a fact and I've seen it and I've lived it. So cut the cord with whoever that negative person is in your space. And I see a lot of you smiling right now. So I know there's a lot of you here that have some villains. I can totally see the eyes. So pull the trigger today, take this as a sign, days are over for villains, and we're gonna surround ourselves, not only with people that support us, but with people who stretch us. Because in those moments when fear comes back in, and it's coming for all of us people, it's always coming, you don't just get to a certain level of success and it's a smooth ride, heck no. You become the number one bestseller, and then everyone asks, well, what's next? And then you say, holy cow, what is next? I don't know. So the fear comes right back in again. You need a team of people that not only encourage you, but stretch you to grow. And for me, one of those people, there's a lot of them, but one of them for me was when I decided to start writing my book and I found an editor. Tapping that editor, I thought I had a data dump on a computer. I didn't know if it was a book and I certainly didn't know if it was any good. But once I found the editor, which is like a mentor, someone who can stretch you, someone who's been there. It's not his first rodeo. He's written 19 books. And when he told me, it's pretty good, I'll be back with you in two weeks, and he sent me a rough manuscript of my book. In that moment, I cried, but I would have never gotten there had I not found that mentor and that person to stretch me. Then when I was ready to release my book, six weeks before it went live, I decided to reach out to my family, my most inner circle, and share what I had created with them. So excited for them to see it, so scared to publish it. I knew the haters were gonna come, but I was excited for my inner circle to see it. What I didn't know was my inner circle, some people were gonna be really excited, and a couple of people weren't so excited. They told me I was gonna get sued by Jen Sincero because my book is a cheap knockoff. They told me I shouldn't publish this book and I needed to end this idea. It's a bad one and go back to what you used to do. You're not a writer. In that moment, I went back under the weighted blanket again. <laughs> Luckily, in this moment, I had fired the villains and I had so many people I could call on speed dial. And you know what they reminded me? Hey, what did you write this book for? To help other people. Is it your heart and your stories or did you try to rip off Jen Sincero? No, I like Jen Sincero's book, but this is my story. Okay, then you're gonna let them keep their limitations on themselves and you're gonna move forward with your plan. 
And without those positive people stretching me and challenging me to grow, I wouldn't have moved forward, but I did. And I am so grateful. And I didn't know my book would be a bestseller. I didn't know how it was gonna happen. I just took that chance, but I couldn't have done it without the positive people around me. And building confidence is so much about who you choose to surround yourself with. There are so many other tips that I have for you around building confidence. And one of them is people will say to me, well, how do you go into difficult meetings when you're feeling down or to speak at something and you're scared and feeling like a fraud? One of the techniques that I learned that I love to share is I was going on an international news program a couple of years ago and I got a call two minutes before going on that this woman was gonna try to make me look like an idiot. Now, I might know a lot about business in the US, but I don't know anything about business in Europe. And I'm very okay with that. It's, I, I know that that's who I am. Well, she said she's gonna try to put you on the hot seat and ask you about European models and, and things that you don't know. I said, thanks for the heads up, click. In two minutes, I had to decide, who can I channel walking into this meeting? Who, what persona can I take on so that I can protect myself and prepare and have confidence? Like him or hate him, there is one man that I know, when he is asked a question that he doesn't know the answer to, he doesn't answer it, he answers a question he wants to answer. And that man is Donald Trump. <laughs> so I decided, I'm gonna Donald Trump her. And no matter what she says to me, I'm gonna refer back to a question that I'd like to answer. If he can get away with it on major media, why can't I? So I did. I went on the show and she said to me, after a couple of minutes of, of niceties, well, Heather, this is interesting, this, this disparity gap in the US with gender pay, but what is that gender pay gap in Europe and other countries? And I said, great question. But an even better question would be, what are we gonna do about that gender pay gap in the US? And I've got an answer for you. And I just kept talking. And guess what? I Donald Trumped her. <laughs> so there's so many different techniques and strategies you can utilize in your everyday life that I include in my book that I encourage you to try. And even in your personal relationships. I shared this on a podcast that I did the other day. I'm, I have a very aggressive personality, which can be great, and it can backfire at times. So when my fiance is irritated with something that I've done, I channel one of my best friends who's the sweetest, softest, most gentle person in the world. And it allows me to calm myself down before walking into a potential argument. There are so many times where you can really utilize another personality when you don't feel like you're at your best, at your strongest, and ready to handle what's coming at you. Another tip and technique that I, I would love for all of you to take on is a seven day challenge to end apologies. Apologizing was a way of life for me, so much so I didn't even know I did it. I'd be at the gym and someone would bump into me, excuse me, sorry, oh sorry, sorry. And when you're apologizing for everything around you, you're chipping away at your confidence. So what I decided was for seven days, I would no longer say I'm sorry. I would say, excuse me. And it sounds so small, but I felt so strong. Getting rid of I'm sorry was so powerful. And then I learned, that's good. But what's even better? Thanking people. So you show up late for a meeting. You walk in and your regular routine is to say, I'm so sorry, this is what happened. The dog ate my homework. Whatever your story is. Instead, today what you'll say is, thank you so much for your patience. I'm ready to begin. Boom, a major confidence building moment. And when you continue to make these small changes in your life and really pay attention to how you're either building your confidence in any moment or chipping away at it, you will see the positive changes that start happening around you. How about putting out into the world what you really wanna do? I've been doing that just over the past two months since my book dropped. And I was lucky enough to be on Maria Menounos' show and I, ha I got invited to her home. And her home was probably $50 million. And when I pulled in, I put her right up on that pedestal and I started getting nervous. And then she jumped out and said, I read your book twice and I loved it. And I calmed myself down and said, okay, she's normal. And then we were talking about bullies and she told me she got bullied at E. And I, and I started seeing, oh wait, she's not on a pedestal, she's just like us. We're all so similar. At the end of the show, she says to me, I wanna help you, how can I help you? I said, well, 
there's one way you can help me. Introduce me to Reese Witherspoon. She said, I don't know her. I said, you people in LA don't all know each other? I mean, didn't you think, I thought they did, right? No, never met her. Okay, she goes, well, give me your phone number anyways. If anything ever happens, I'll call you. Okay, great. I went about my life. 24 hours later, I'm still in LA, and I'm sitting in a green room. My phone rings. Guess who it is? Maria Menounos. Hello? Hi, Heather. I've got some crazy news, and I'm shaking right now. What is it? Reese Witherspoon just called me. If this isn't a case of manifestation at its best, I don't know what is. And if someone told me to manifest something a year ago, I would have laughed in their face. But by putting out into the universe what you really want and asking people for help, it really works. So give it a shot. So I said, all right, what does she want? Well, she wants me to go on her podcast. I said, okay, she, I'm gonna fly home, I'm gonna get books. I'm gonna get a book for Reese. I'm gonna get a book for her co-host on the podcast. And I'm getting a book for the CEO of Hello Sunshine who makes movies off of female authored books. This is what I call, from Boston, a trifecta. So I went home and I wrote the books out and I overnighted them and she took them in there. And she said, Heather, they're so excited. They can't wait to read the book. And I gave them your phone number and I don't know them, so I'm not gonna speak to them again, but best of luck. And crickets. So what I've learned from sales and from radio is you can't put one thing out there. You've just gotta keep filling that pipeline. You've gotta keep taking steps and keep taking action. So every day as I move the ball down the court, I keep looking for other opportunities to connect me back to Reese Witherspoon. I bring her up to the craziest people because I am making this meeting happen. And probably Bill will be able to do that after this right now, but I didn't even think of that until right now. Excellent job manifesting, Heather. So putting things out really pays and it works and you never know who that one person is that's gonna rise up and help you. So some other great tips and strategies I have for you, put yourself first. So many people pretend to be the martyr. Oh, well, that's nice for you, you can do that. I'm a mother and my children come first. Well, how's that working out for you? Because you sound miserable all the time. <laughs> so what I've decided and what I've learned is I'm a better mom when I go work out and my son sees me happy instead of me complaining, well, I'm sitting inside watching you play Fortnite yet again when I could be at the gym. <laughs> and some of you have kids my child's age. So, you know, there's so many different ways that you can put yourself first. There's so many different things you can do with word choices. Getting rid of I feel in meetings is a great suggestion. I feel this person is a good hire versus this person is a good hire. Start owning your thoughts and really listen to the one person that matters in your life. There is only one opinion that really matters, and that is yours. So I do wanna give you a little bit of perspective. I, I think I only have like one minute left right now. I'm gonna get yanked out of here. But I want you to know that I've been speaking at so many different universities and huge companies around the country. I'm going to speak at the WNBA in Vegas, which is so crazy, sidebar. But anyways, I want you to know that this group and this platform that you have here with Limitless is so professionally handled and, and I'm just so impressed with the way this organization has put this whole concept together and invested in you guys and I, I hope that you guys all understand it's really a special thing and I'm grateful that you had time for me here today. And you guys better ask some questions because I saw some of the faces and I will call out some of those people smiling about the villains for sure. Okay, so, oops, okay, can you guys hear me? All right, I have a pretty loud voice, so I'll go without the mic, I can do this. So we have a few questions that you guys submitted, which is awesome, we're gonna start there and I'm hoping through that and through both Heather and our, our encouragement of all of you here, you're gonna have some questions on the floor. So one question for you, Heather, is since you started this journey, what's the biggest aha that you've had among this whole crazy journey? The biggest aha moment for me is that I kept myself in that lane so long. A few people have said to me, of course your book was gonna be great, you always succeed. But when I was sitting over here, I didn't think like that. I thought, yeah, I succeed in radio. I've been in it for 20 years. I mean, of course I succeed here, I know what I'm doing. How am I gonna succeed over here in another lane? 
What I've learned and my aha moment is get rid of the flipping lanes. That's how you innovate. That's how you create. Just because you succeeded over here means you can succeed anywhere. Take what's special and unique and talented about you and apply it to different things. Take chances. That's the best way to grow. And without growth, I mean, really, what is there? Great, thank you. Uh, another question we have from a lot of people was, I know I'm just starting out, and kind of, you know, it's almost, what do you, what do you wish, you know, you knew as your younger self when you were just starting your career out? What advice would you give yourself? Find your voice. If you're invited to a meeting, you need to speak up. You're taking up a seat. So not only, oh, should I raise my hand and say something? You've been invited because your voice, we want to hear it. We want the perspective of that younger person, that new person. You're gonna see things differently than my 43-year-old background in radio sees it. You're gonna see it from a younger, fresh perspective. And you're taking up a seat in the meeting. So make sure you make it meaningful and at least raise your hand once to contribute and watch how much easier it gets each week and each time you do it. Another question, which you've touched on, but would be curious to hear a bit more is, you know, people, and you've talked about people putting you down during your career. What is, you know, beyond getting rid of the villains, is there something else that you would tell people that you use to get rid of the negativity in your life when this happens? You know, getting rid of negativity or dealing with bullies is an interesting thing, but for me, it was really about speaking up for myself. I had a woman that I worked with that would ignore me intentionally. And when she would do that, she would walk into a meeting, there'd be 10 people sitting there. She would say hello to everyone and not to me. And then she would sit down smiling and I would put my head down. In those moments, I was chipping away at my confidence. What I learned to do through practicing in the mirror and getting calm about it was I was gonna call her out in a very positive way. And I began to do that and I flipped the script and I created moments where I was building confidence. She'd walk into the meeting and she'd pretend I wasn't there and we were all about to start the meeting and I'd stand up, hi Barbara, I didn't see you. Did, you, did you not see me? I don't know, there's a disconnect, good to see you. Oh my goodness. No one could say I was rude or obnoxious. I was just making the point that I'm here too and I'm worth being recognized. And that started a very big change for me. One thing, another tip in your book that you talk about is your shoes. Can you talk about that? I think people would love to hear Sure. That. So this, oh my gosh, this actually goes back to the NBA meeting. So I have a chapter in my book about my son and basketball. He's obsessed, poor little short white boy. But he's obsessed with basketball and he thinks he's going to the NBA. Anyways, he is a big fan of Steph Curry. And so I write a chapter in my book about the importance of reminders. And so much in life is about the people that we surround ourselves with and what we do. But sometimes lifting ourselves up is a job we can do for ourselves. So what I do is I create safety nets, just like I bring multiple outfits when I travel in case something spills, I create a safety net. I put notes around my house, in my phone, and even on the bottom of my shoes. And my son taught me that. So I'm sitting in the meeting with the NBA player and he says, I really liked the chapter you had about the basketball shoes and writing, you can do all things on your shoes. Do you know where that's from, Heather? And I said, yeah, Steph Curry. And he said, uh, no, the Bible. <laughs> 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 Mistake moment, okay, so anyways, I guess that was from the Bible, which is really meaningful. <laughs> okay, I wanna open it up. Who, I know people have questions. I know people are curious. Who has a question? Come on, people. We're a curious bunch at Horizon. Ah, okay, I see somebody wave there. Good, awesome. I'm gonna have to say you are a confident person because you were the first one to speak up and that was a confidence building moment, so great job. You know, I've been told that in my career too and what's really important at work is to collaborate and create a network, right? And expand your network and want people to want to help you. So it's really important that you work on that and it's great feedback that someone was honest with you and shared that, otherwise you'd have no idea. One of the ways to relate to people is to be transparent. 
whether you're confident or not, we all fall down occasionally and cut our knee and we burn our hair off because we go to a terrible hairdresser, which happened to me. And you know, we all have our moments that we don't look our best or made a mistake. Being really transparent and sharing not only the good moments that you have and those really confident moments, but also the low moments that you have too will allow you to connect in a much more real way with people and then they'll take their guard down and start to get to know you. Great, who else has a question? Oh, come on, yeah, awesome. Hi, Hi. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, throughout the Limit Limitless series, there's been a common thread of how women can support women and how men can support women in the workplace. Um, what are your recommendations or suggestions for how we can build confidence in each other? Building confidence in other women? Uh, yes, or just how you know men can create a space to help women gain that confidence. Just how we can help each other, you know, gain that confidence. Sure. So one idea that comes to mind is I write about finding my superpower, and I think it's really important that everyone spends a little bit of time discovering your superpower if you don't know what it is. Who in here already knows what their superpower is? Right, not many people. So I didn't either, but everyone has a superpower. It's something that you're naturally good at, that when you spend time doing it, you really come alive. I have a makeup artist in Miami, and when I ask her, what's your superpower? She pulls out a brush, and she says, I come alive when I hold this thing, and nothing could hold me back from not having this brush in my hand. And when I feel down, I need to do someone's makeup. That's her superpower, it brings her to life. For me, I love speaking. When I'm speaking, I really come alive and I feel invigorated. So the way that I found out what my superpower is, and this would be a great way for you guys to help one another because I found it very confidence building, I reached out to people at work and in my close inner circle, and I sent 12 people an email because I wanted to discover, back then I called it my unique value proposition, now I call it my superpower, whatever you want to call it, reach out and ask, what do you see as different or unique or special about me that I might not be seeing? And those answers that you get are so confidence inspiring and it's so positive, but it's a great experience to do with one another to really uplift each other. You're welcome. So one final question, and then we're gonna have Heather sign books for people that got books, is there is definitely a perception, Heather, that once you make it to a certain point in life, or you publish a book about confidence, let's say, you must be confident all the time. Can you talk about that? Yeah, that's a lie. So that's just pure lie. And if you are just flatlining confident, you're not growing, you're not pushing yourself at all. And how is, the, that is no way to live because you're either moving forward or you're going backward. And I've been that person going backward. The world might not have seen it, but I remember sitting at home saying, Gosh, I could have done that. Why didn't I do that? If you've ever had those moments where you're down on yourself for not taking that chance, start taking baby steps today. It's scary. I'm scared that I agreed to allow a Latin version of my book come out and I'm meeting with the woman on Friday. I'm scared it's not gonna be good and it's gonna have my name. But I've gotta take a chance. I've gotta give it a shot because I believe there's people that only speak Spanish that need confidence too. I was scared to create a video series around this. And I'm so afraid for it to drop next week because I don't know if people are gonna like it or not. The haters are always gonna come and the haters are a sign that you're doing something unique and different. And when the haters show up, it's a reason to applaud that you are shining your light and owning your own unique value proposition. So just keep growing and be afraid if you're not growing and you're feeling really, really confident and settled because that's unsettling. Thank you. Um, how did you go through line find success? We all define success in different ways. Uh, you had past successes in your prior lives. We all had some stumbles that most of us fall through. How are you finding success now in your in your life? It's a forever moving target. And someone asked me a similar question about do you love the journey or the destination? To me, it's all a journey and really the growth. 
the fact that I'm taking these chances and putting myself out there, something that a year ago I couldn't fathom doing would have been petrifying, that is success to me. The fact that I'm doing something that I wake up every day and I love and I don't know what's happening next is so scary and so fun all together. But the fact that I'm taking a chance on me, really, that means success to me. And it really sets a good example for my son. That's kind of what the whole success thing goes back to for me. Thank you, Heather. Very